Good evening and welcome to New Geelong on this 8th day of November 2013. Buckley's, the entertainment centre, celebrates its 20th birthday with a big bang. From the up and down spring weather world, we will cover the next six days of the forecast weather for Geelong and the surf coast. And in sport, it's action from local GCA cricket, Division 1 bowls from Belmont and Drysdale, and all the fast action from the Geelong Greyhound Centre meeting this week. Simmer, S-I-M-M-A, is an organisation for the Socially Inclusive Musicians Mentoring Alliance, an evolution of people wanting to get together around music with the emphasis being on their musical prowess and not their disability. Meryl Friend reports. We're here at the Grovedale Scout Hall in Perrott Street where SIMA, Socially Inclusive Musicians Mentoring Alliance, meet every Monday night from 5.30. Everyone's welcome if you want to join in with their musicians program. Tell us what you love about this group. Um, the main thing I love is the diversity. Um, I suppose anyone can play what they want and it's open to everyone. Um, yeah, I really love that um, the atmosphere, like the best moment is being on stage and just having everyone like cheering and um, just like singing out the lyrics to your songs and things. So it's, it's the best feeling. <laughs> Fantastic. We saw you on the keys there. How long have you been playing? Um, since I was seven. And part of this group for how long? Um, four years. Um, yeah. So what's for the, in the future, do you think, for Simmer? Um, well, definitely. Um, we've done Queensland Music Festival, um, been on Australia's Got Talent. So I suppose the next step for us would be, um, yeah, just getting our name out there and um, hopefully getting some more gigs. Um, we've got paid gigs coming up, so pretty excited. Yeah. The future's looking bright. Thank you. <laughs> so sure, um, Simmer's been born out of work that we've done um, for the last six years. We were with the Salvation Army and we decided to create a not-for-profit organisation. Um, and the aim was that people with all sorts of disabilities or abilities wanted to be able to meet in a safe place, uh, rehearse songs and perform for other people. So. Fantastic. Now you've got an open door policy here. Everyone's welcome. Yeah, look, that's it. Socially inclusive, it says it all. Uh, the mentoring part is that we have people that are quite skilled musicians that come down and help different musicians. So it's about helping out and a men so that mentoring, and it's an alliance. So it's an alliance of people that want to be involved with each other. And so people are members and so I'm not, I might pretend to be the boss but they tell me what to do around here. Yeah. So it's for anybody who wants to play or be involved with music? Look, we, 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 we only have nice people. Um, no, but the, look, there's, a, there's, a, there's no drugs and alcohol so it means that people that might be recovering from that sort of thing can come here and safely know that, that, that we're not, no one's, there's none of that sort of pressure here. Yeah. And you've actually done some pretty great great gigs. You've been down Queensland music festival yeah 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 we watched it rain but we had lots of fun um yeah so we've done a few gigs for different organizations um we've done stuff for the leukemia foundation uh we've done work for uh salvation army for aa for different organizations and we do private gigs as well occasionally you know. so, so how could people find out more if they're interested in coming along or on facebook or contact me on my mobile phone Facebook. So it's Monday nights here at the Grovedale Scout Hall. Yeah, yep, we'll find it. Okay. Come down, help us pack it, pull it to, together. So we put people come through and learn how to set up stage equipment and stuff like that. So it's not like we set it all up and go, oh, welcome. We go, okay, this is a power lead and off you trod. And then That's clean cool. up and pack up. And so, yeah. And then occasionally we're going to have um, gigs where we do on a Friday night. We have a barbecue yep. and we invite um, friends and family. And we had one last Friday. So that was good fun. Yeah. Yeah. So you are actually legally blind, but there's no stopping you. No, 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 no. Well, I've still got these on my head, I'm laughing. <laughs> you know? No, 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 don't let it stop me. No. The music Lab, we started firstly with, uh, with the Salvation Army, and we had a couple of instruments and a, a space in one of the Salvation Army sheds next door to their office. And myself and Sean were um, looking to make use of the stuff. So we said, let's just, we've got some instruments, can we use them? and get some clients to come down and play music and let's just see what happens. So that's kind of what we started. So we just started bringing people down and our idea was to have a band so that they could rehearse and do something that they probably never you know, imagined they would do, but they dream they do it. So 
where they're dreaming they're going to sing a song. So we get all these people together, start playing music. So, so that uh, music. Like love to come and play so it kind of started really small we're doing little Christmas gigs and you know doing a few Christmas carols and, and it sort of went through that uh, with the Salvation Army were giving us a help so we, uh, we got a gig at Drug Action Week one year and so then we just started doing that every year the local charity started inviting us to provide music how many members do you have now oh, I think we've probably got about 50 wow. 50 we started with Three. We had a drummer and a guitarist, and myself and Sean, so we could fill the gaps. It looks like you all have a fantastic time. Yeah, it's, it's a great thing. I mean, in terms of, I mean, I've been working in the community sector for 20 years and uh, done a lot of programs with people, and, and this is one that we really don't have to do a lot. We just come along, put the music on, and really we just facilitate people coming up and singing or playing. So. From Grovedale Scout Hall, Merrill Friends, News Geelong. Thank you, Merrill. The lights are turned on as the $1.7 million extension to the Merrigie Drive in Torquay North has extended the street into a two-lane boulevard from the Civic and Community Centre through the nearby residential developments into Torquay's town centre via Fisher Street. As our local resident, Ian Nichols reports. Well, this is the fastest growing area of the Surf Coast Shire. It's known as Torquay North and making things happen in this area has been one of the highest priorities from Council and Merry Jig Drive where I'm standing now goes right through from the Surf Coast Highway into the new estates of the Dunes, the Sands of course and the Key, fast growing areas and I'm standing on the intersection of Wadawurrung Drive or Wadawurrung Way, the original land owners of course, the custodians of the land, who have been uh, honoured with the naming rights here. And we're talking with Councillor David Bell about the movement that's happening in this part of Torquay North. But we hoped we'd get out closer to Mary Jig Drive and just see how far it takes us now. It's a wonderful shortcut. I found that personally with this new boulevard open off the Surf Coast Highway. It's going to take a lot of the traffic away from uh, the city centre. Well, I don't know about taking it away from the city centre. It's making it easier for me to get to the city centre from a council meeting. Um, I was delighted the day it opened to drive down there and I didn't have to go through a couple of sets of lights. I could drive along and see the wonderful view as you go over the crest slightly down. It's just beautiful. Fisher Street's got a new life. Well, it has, and Torquay North is the uh, chosen, uh, you know, development area. And with Mary Jig Drive now open to uh, the public for uh, cars and buses or whatever, it's made a huge difference. It has um, been watching the traffic slowly build up as people discover it's open. Um, in terms of coming up from quite a lot of Torquay to here, it saves you going up the Surf Coast Highway and cutting across it. It is. A wonderful new linkage. There's a number of parents down there who are very happy when the Surf Coast Secondary College opens that their kids will be able to ride to school in much greater safety than coming up the Surf Coast Highway or trying to cut across paddocks. So the pathways that go with the Mary Jig Drive are very good and I think it is just time that it happened. Well yes, we can't overlook the importance of the schools here, the new uh, secondary college and the primary school. It means kids probably in many cases won't even have to go near the highway itself. Well they don't. It's, you know, part of the beauty of it is that for all those people in Wamba Park and down that way, they can just drive, ride, ride their bikes up the bike paths, cut across and they're at school. And I must say that school is looking rather magnificent and should certainly be open first term. They've done a wonderful job on building that. They have indeed. It's been fantastic, the work that's been done around the council precinct in General Daniel Laurie Fields and uh, the opening up of this area. Uh, Torquay North is already taking uh, a different shape, isn't it? Oh, it's certainly changed from the paddocks and the flower farm, unfortunately. I did quite like driving along and seeing all the daffodils and irises flowering in their times, but it is certainly developing along in a, uh, a very nice fashion. Um, I think the Torquay can be proud of what's happened particularly around the council precinct as the ovals come online. Um, we're just building a soccer pitch at the moment, that's underway. If some of this lovely rain would go away for a few days we'd probably get it planted but um, it will be and hopefully um, the swimming pool task force will complete its things and we'll 
see in the not too distant future a swimming pool added to this complex and I think that will sort of round it out perfectly. Well we know that uh, we've had the sands totally developed, we've had the quay, another huge estate uh, fully sold and now the dunes we see coming online and blocks of land selling fairly quickly so this populated area obviously is going to need better uh, systems of uh, traffic and we know that Mary Jig Drive is just the start of it. That's the start of it. We've got uh, works um, which should happen early next year on Horseshoe Bend Road, um, widening of Horseshoe Bend Road and the construction of some dedicated bicycle paths next to that. That's another project that's underway. Um, you know, the area is coming along and very happy to see it do that. At what could be the new hub of Torquay, this is Wadawurrung Drive and Mary Jig Drive, Ian Nichols for News Geelong. Thank you, Ian. This is News Geelong. As we go to a break, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and look for your Facebook YouTube. We will return after this.